individually or together, why would they want to be of service to someone or something other than themselves? My perspective would be that if you're involved and you're helping someone, you're helping yourself. And not that you can help everybody all the time, but I, that's, that's how I feel. If you're involved and you're helping someone, it makes you feel good. What can you expect to feel from it? What can the, the viewer, they say, okay, so what can they expect to get from doing that? Uh, it's going to go educational on you now. That's fine. Uh, one of Maslow's hierarchy of needs. It's self-fulfillment. So you think that it, it will help them acquire self-fulfillment? I believe it. One or both of these viewers that we were just talking about mm -hmm. liked what you had to say. They feel inspired at least a little bit. They'd like to try it, but maybe they're still timid or whatever. Is there a low bar of entry, non-threatening, get your toesies wet kind of entry-level service project that you could suggest to them? I was at the VA hospital today. And at the VA hospital day, as I'm coming down the ramp, here's a veteran that's in a wheelchair. He's lost his leg, and he's got the other leg has got a cast on it. And he's getting ready to try to come up this ramp in a wheelchair. And as I walked down, I said to him, are you okay? Can you make it up the ramp? And he says, I'm tired. And I said, then let me help you. So I helped him in, and I got him up the ramp, and I put him in the door, and I, and I opened up the door, and I said, do you need any more help? I can take you around the corner. No, you did enough for me. Thank you very kindly. That's uplifting. And how did you feel about yourself when you were done? I felt like Bobby McDonald. Okay, but you felt like that before you saw the guy. Well, but that's but that's me. That got me involved. Okay, it, it, it was service, and I was helping somebody. And my reward is, I just helped him. I don't need a reward. You don't need something for. I mean, you don't always have to get something to do something good. If I could give you an ironclad, one hundred percent guarantee of success, zero chance of failure, for your next effort. What would you attempt? I would look in to do a little bit more service with veterans. Right? I mean, I would... I would Any would, speci specific aspect? No, or? none whatsoever. Uh, I just... I, 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 there, there are four things that I know veterans need. And, and the reason why I say veterans is because we're coming off and we're still involved, but we just had war on almost th three fronts. We we're still playing around with Iran over there, but we've got Iraq. And, and, and we've got Afghanistan. And we've never really had two wars at one time. We had Vietnam, you know, we had Korea, you know, the World War II was a bigger one. But, uh, you know, this is a little bit strange because things are different, things are modern. And there are four avenues that veterans really, really need. And they need a job coming back, you know, and they, they, they need uh, an education, and they need help with, uh, with, uh, with, with, um, housing, and with their health, those areas. And I, I, right now, because of the cutbacks and no jobs, the people that are in government service, they, they, there's just not too many people that can help you right now. I mean, it's, it's, they've cut back, they're on furlough, and we have more people coming in with less people to help. There's got to be some way to pick up the, the, the slack. You asked me that, in fact, actually today, this afternoon, was with my buddy who I took to the, to the Veterans Hospital today. And I told him, I said, you know, what I need to do is take a little bit of that education fund we have with the Chamber and maybe tie some of the Veterans Associations or Veterans Affairs with that, that component, from an education and, and, and from an employment and then health and, and uh, housing. Just information on where you can go, how do you go, and how do you take those steps. So, and that, that would probably be my next step. Let's pretend for a moment that all seven billion of us are going to watch this video. Okay. What would you say to us? Keep the faith. Keep doing what you're doing. Keep moving forward. What's your favorite movie? The Magnificent Seven. Why? Because you had seven individuals, although they had ulterior motives, <laughs> they went in and helped somebody. And then they had an opportunity to help them. They did what they were supposed to do, then they got thrown out. 
And with all the odds against them, they decided to go back to help the people that need to be helped. And the, the ultimate statement was, why are you doing this? And it was because it was the right thing to do at the time. It felt like a good thing to do at the time. Okay. What's your favorite book? Oh, Horatio Alger's A Drift to New York. Because I always believe it. I, I really believe that uh, as Horatio Alger was, you know, the good guy always gets his in the end. In spite of all the trials and tribulations and all the things that happen that are good and maybe not so good in your life. You do a good job. You stay the course. Good things happen to you. Who are your heroes? Oh, I have many heroes. I have many heroes. Uh, my family. When you say, or you hear the statement, uh, a village raising a child, I'm very, very blessed. My, my uncles, my grandfathers, uh, my, my, my father, my mother. Uh, that, that, that whole surrounding of cousins and, and uncles and aunts really made me a, a, a wonderful individual. I'm blessed. Uh, later on in life, you, you take a baseball hero like Jackie Robinson and, and, and things he did, but later on in life it got even better because I got a chance to meet Eddie Robinson. And you know, look at the different individuals that overcome or overcame different factions in their life. When there was a boulder in front of them, they figured out how to go over, around, under, or through it to make things happen. And they were successful doing it. What can we as a society do to help those who don't have stellar families to become servant leaders like you are? Those of us that had talents. I mean, I, I, again, my family moved, helped move my agenda. But all along the way, I had teachers in school, um, Mr. Seymour, Mr. McAdoo, uh, that helped me with public speaking, or helped me with reading, and went out of their way, even if I was a little jerk, they still went out of the way as a teachable moment and said, you're going to be something, you're going to be somebody that doesn't play. And you're better than that, which is a balance which I found a balance in my life because after a while your parents that repetition <laughs> gets a little old but when you hear from someone else that you have potential or as I had uh, my, my, I would say that uh, coach uh, coach uh, white from, from LA Harbor College you know, flat out told me you're not on the team you know I'm kicking you off I mean you're not going to get a uniform and I kind of looked at him and said wait a minute I'm, I'm going to work my butt off you know you're going to break my leg but I'm going to do it and that was way back in 1968, and we're still best of friends today. But it was because he was disciplined enough to tell me, this is what I need, this is what I want, and if you want to play on my team, this is what you have to do. And, and I met that challenge. All right, now I may not have been the best of ball players, but I met the challenge. And I've ran into some other people that just flat out told me, I'm doing it because you are good. I don't want anything. I'm not looking for anything. I don't need anything. I just want you to be better. Thank you so much for meeting with me. I appreciate it. Thank you for your time. I appreciate it. Hope, hope it helps.